Are you living the life you want? Spending enough time with the ones you love? Welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show where you'll learn how becoming a successful real estate investor can change your life like it did ours. We're here to help you reach all of your goals and create wealth through real estate investing. So let's roll. Hi, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber. Hey, everybody. So we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. We have a great show outline for you today. So let's jump right in. Yep. So today's topic is to flip or not to flip. So, you know, you guys have all seen the plethora of home flipping shows that there are on TV now. A lot of people are really getting into it. People are excited about it. But there's also a lot of people that sit on their couch <laughs> and just Think wish they it. could do it. Yeah. They're thinking about it. So, you know, we're here to show you the, the real how-tos and, and how to actually get into it. Um, the difference is that those people that are on the TV shows and people like us, we actually take action instead of just sitting on our couch and, and watching it. You know, real estate is such an awesome vehicle to really get you from point A to point B, what you want to accomplish in your life. Because with flipping houses, you really can make those large chunks of money in a short amount of time. So, but there's some differences that um, experienced investors no, and that's what we want to share with you today. And in the spirit of sharing, Glenn loves to share so much that he gave me his cold. So <laughs> hopefully I can get through this podcast well, without I, it was sneezing shared, and It was shared by our kids to me. So I'm not sure who, how that all came about, but, but then, we have lots of kids. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, back to real estate, you know, it, it, if you buy it right, which is what we teach you how to do, if you buy the houses right, there is very minimal risk. So it's a very safe investment to make. And flipping is really how you and I got started in real estate investing. Our first house was a rental, but that was really before we got into so it. We're, we're going go to well, we're gonna go into that in a minute. Um, but that's flipping is how we maybe got started. Maybe I want to go into it now. No, <laughs> you're gonna... <laughs> no I'm going to follow you, I guess. Yes, you are. Yes, dear. <laughs> that's okay. the key to a good mm. marriage. Yes, mm -hmm. dear. <laughs> yes, lovely. So, um, we'll jump into how we got started, I guess. We're going to dive in that later? Yeah, that, we're going to dive that, into that, that later. That the plan? So, I'm just thinking about how that kind of started. Follow the outline, baby. Yes, dear. She's very <laughs> flexible. It's very nice. Okay. So, question is, are you one of those people that, um, you know, you want to quit your job? Do you want to make large chunks of cash? Do you watch the TV shows, get jacked up about it? Um, that's all great, but savvy investors or experienced investors know that there's, there's you know, some properties have better exit strategies than other properties when you go forward, right? And so you really have to know what you're looking for. Flipping is awesome, um, and so something we actively do on a regular basis. We used to do a ton. We had some years where we did, uh, I think one year we did 48 full-on renovations in yep. one year. We flipped about 100 houses that year, but 48 were full-on renovations, and that yeah, was... Yeah, that was challenging. Yeah, that was a lot. So we it was also... A good year. <laughs> it was a good year. It was an exhausting year. It was a good it year. Was. So um, we want to introduce you to the concept of wealth building and building income and also creating a passive income. It's going to be important as we talk today to you guys about some different ways we can do it. So to flip or not to flip, that's the question at hand. And really the answer to that is partially going to depend on your goals in, lo in large part. So the, the question is, do you want cash now? Or do you want to create that long-term passive income? Or do you want both, like Glenn and I do? So we're going to talk about the pros and cons of both methods. So flipping. Clearly, if you watch TV, it's done in 30 minutes or maybe an hour. But that's not true. Uh, when you watch that, it's uh, they, they sometimes make it look very easy. And you know, we have friends who are on HGTV. And you know we know a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that goes on there, right? So it's still a reality show. So right. it's, you know, it's... Um, it's not as easy to make it look, but it's definitely worth it. We always teach in our workshops that we say, you know, what we do is not easy, but it's, everybody worth says it. it's worth it, right? So uh, that's important to know. So again, you can make large chunks of cash or you can make residual income. So it's about the pros, uh, pros and cons of, of flipping. So the pros are if you buy it right. So we teach that concept. Um, I can't stress that part enough. So important. Yeah, well, you make money when, we, when you buy real estates, when you make your money. When you sell real estate, you realize that money or you actually get your money out of the property. So what I mean by that, the market, will, the house will only sell for what the market will pay, period. You have to buy it inexpensively enough and budget out your expenses. And if you do that right, you'll always make sure that you make a profit in there because the market's going to pay what the market's going to pay. If you overpay for a house, which people have done, um, I don't, we, we've... I don't think we've done that very, very often. We've had mistakes yeah. in, in management, but if you buy, a lot of people I see, they buy a house and they get so excited, they buy it wrong. And then at the end they say, well, I have to sell it for, let's say 220,000 to make a profit or to get my money back. 
but the market only is willing to pay 200,000. So it doesn't matter what you have to sell the house for. The market could care less what you have to sell a house for. The market's gonna sell it for the market's gonna sell for, period. So you make your money when you buy, you realize the money when you when you get out and sell that house. I was just thinking of something as you're talking too. So many people um, make very emotional decisions and when you're a real estate investor, you have to make business decisions. You might be you know, jacked because there's a house in your neighborhood. We had a student the other day that came up and said, oh, in our, in our area, there's a house for $10,000. Well, I yeah. said, yeah, but that doesn't mean it's a good deal. I mean, Glenn and I have yeah. been offered houses for a dollar before make it work. that we've turned away because the numbers just simply don't work. The ARV or the after values just simply don't work. So we're gonna teach you how to make those business decisions, not emotional decisions. It, it is rewarding flipping a house. You know, there is something valuable about driving by um, and seeing a house that you flipped. It was something that was really ugly. If you've ever seen our office in, in uh, upstate New York, it was the ugliest house on the road for about 20 years. It looked like a crack house. <laughs> it did. It literally, it, it looked like that in Google not too long ago, but um, it was really ugly and nasty and running down. But we took that and converted it to an office. And one of the things that struck me, one of the coaches that I coach with um, for my daughter's uh, son's basketball team, she came up to me and said, you know what you did, Glenn? You made a statement. And I yeah. said, what do you mean I made a statement? She goes, now the whole town knows what you do. I said, what do you mean? She goes, you just took that nasty looking house and you made it look beautiful. And our office looks like a home. That was our idea when we built the office. So pretty cool. So that part's rewarding. Um, you get a lot of valuable experience when you flip houses. You learn about real estate, construction, contractors, all that kind of stuff. The connections that you get to yeah, that. Budgeting, yeah. contracts, or contacts, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So cons are, it's scary, right? Where do you start? <clears throat> I thought you were going to say something. No. Just, just coughing. <laughs> just like, coughing, thank you. I thought you could tell me I was wrong again. <laughs> That'd be something different. You're so, doing good, baby. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> a little pat in the back. Um, you want to protect yourself from making a bad deal, right? We teach that in our workshops too. It can be stressful uh, when you do that, so make sure you so you find yourself a mentor. That's gonna be very valuable. And you know, start to finish, it does take a few months. So when you're flipping to make money, it's hard to make money quickly unless you find a deal you can just get in there and clean and flip. That's possible. But most of the time, for a full-on renovation, you're four to six months to. By the time you buy it, close. Do your renovations, put it on the market, go under contract. Then, then the, the closing cycle could be anywhere from 45 to 60 days with attorneys or your title company. It took about four to six months start to finish for that. So it takes a little while. You can make good money, but it takes a little while to get your actual cash back out of it. So right. again, it can be challenging, but it's worth it. Yep. And you know, flipping was really our bread and butter for many years <laughs> and I mean we, it's, st it's we still, still are active is. investors still as far is, as flipping yeah. goes but it, it was our bread and butter and I was thinking back you know we started at the end of 2007 um, we did one house at the very end of that year and we made like seventeen thousand dollars on it but here's what I, w I was thinking about this podcast our first full year in the business we did three houses that year in 2008 and we made over hundred and thirty five thousand dollars in profits yeah. that year on three houses Three houses. That's not that many houses to flip in a year. And you know what? What would one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars do for your life in one year if you just took action and did it the right way and bought the houses right and knew how to renovate them properly and knew all the things to look for? That's that's what we're here to teach you guys, and that's what we're so excited to share. Yeah. Um, yeah. My turn now. Yeah, it's your turn. Good. We have notes for going by, so just <laughs> making sure we're we're doing it right. So, um, make sure we don't forget anything. We go through this. So, buying and holding. It's the next part that I have to talk to you. So, buying and holding. Um, same same deal here. You have to buy the property right. Sometimes you can pay a little more for a house if you're going to rent it out because there's a different strategy to it. But you'll fix it up and you'll rent it. It's a different strategy to fix up a rental though. We don't do nearly as much right. on a rental because on a rental house, um, you know, you don't have to fix the the bigger items. Like let's say that a uh, a roof has five years left on it. Well, you might fix that to flip a house because someone's not going to want to buy a house with an older roof. But if you're going to rent that, I'm going to keep that going until it's on its last leg. You yeah. know, not, not to look. I want, don't want it to look horrible, but I want to. I can use the time up, right? Right. A furnace I can use up until it dies. You know, I can right. have repaired that kind of stuff. So it takes time to do that. But, um, but you want to fix it, then you want to rent it out, and then you want to let the tenant pay your mortgage. Now they pay you, you pay the mortgage. That's the cycle of how it works. But it's a beautiful thing when someone else pays for your investment. I was just, just did a, uh, I was just interviewed and I said that real estate's the only way the average people can, can really truly build wealth. And it's a, the only investment where you don't have to use your own money to build wealth. Literally, you can use tenants' money to pay off your mortgage. I mean, think about the power of that. So there's a the great exit strategy there. So passive income, you know, builds long-term wealth. When you have passive income that comes in and you have 
an asset that appreciates in value. So every year that house is worth more money. Traditionally speaking, even the bad areas of the country, the, you know, property values really have increased over the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 100 years. They're always moving up. So the asset is appreciating while you're getting monthly income. So what a what a ridiculous way to, to build wealth, right? Pretty awesome. Really, truly generational wealth because you can leave it to your kids. Right. And leave it to whoever you want to leave it to. Leave it to me if you'd like to. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever you want. If you want to leave it to, I'll take it. So well, We'll add that to our portfolio, no yeah, problem. Yeah, that'd be great. But, you know, we really owned our, our first rental property. Can I do the cons first or no? Oh, you didn't do the cons yet? I did not yet. What are you waiting for? Totally, Clearly you weren't listening to me, but I really appreciate that. So, yes. I have a cold. My ears are stopped uh -huh. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, the cons are there's headaches to being a landlord. And I'm going to encourage you to not be a landlord. We stress strongly to hire a property management company. Uh, for all of our dozens of rentals, we don't have any, we don't do any work ourselves. Matter of fact, we actually drive by three to five of our own rentals, uh, depending on which way we go to the office every day, and they don't even know who we are. Sometimes I walk my dog and they come out, they wave to me, and I go, how you doing? They have no idea who I am, and I like it that way. So I'm going to recommend that you do it that way. Um, but there are some headaches. Tenants can destroy property. Uh, they can be a pain in the butt, uh, even with a property management company. But at the end of the day, it is work like anything, but in this case, it's really worth it to build that, that generational wealth. So, you know, we owned our first rental property before we ever started flipping. And it yes, was really we before did. we got education on anything. And we did it all wrong. <laughs> we did not have a management company. We bought the house wrong in the wrong kind of area. Uh, I mean, it was it was about as bad. I mean, it was... Can I tell all the things? Go ahead. So this house we bought, I had a, a good friend of mine was a contractor. And he said, don't, don't buy the house. Don't touch it with a 10-foot pole was yeah, what he, he said. said. <laughs> so I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. So apparently I just wanted to... We were excited. We made an emotional we were, decision. We're, this was before yes. we had any education, before we ever flipped a house, anything. We were very emotional. We said, I just want to buy a house. <clears> I just <throat> want to get something going because I just want to get going. Does that ring a bell to you? So I was like, I just want to get going with it. So we bought this house. Now, it's on a busy road, which is a drawback. Lots of dust. Across the street is a chemical plant. Literally right next door was a bar called the Bad Pig. It was owned by a cop that got fired. An ex-cop, yeah. Ex-cop. Um, that when I say cop was fired, yeah. I think they knew it was ex-cop. So then there... I mean, motorcycles in the parking yeah, lot, Harley, big barbecues. Bar. Yeah, I mean, it was... Yeah, yeah. biker bar. Um, then there was a railroad track right next to the Bad Pig. Behind us was a swamp. Behind that was a dump, like where they put cars. And this is a sad part of the story. We found out that uh, a month after we owned the house, we found out that just a year prior, that an 18-year-old uh, boy hung himself in the garage. That's, that was a, awful. that's, a, that's an awful part of the story. But... Um, and look, the previous owner had cobbed the whole house. Uh, I mean, everything was cobbed together. Uh, was the basement was made of dirt. Oh, uh, it was horrible. I mean, yeah, it was just, it was, it was Beams a really... Beams were cut, lots of... Yeah. Plumbing was all screwed up, wrong size, oh, everything. It, it was cool. a really bad investment. So anyways, we bought that wrong. We didn't know what we were looking for, and we made an emotional decision. That was what we did. That was horrible. So We've turned that around, though. It took us 10 years, though, to turn that around. Right. We had to build some equity, and then we took a loan out against it fixed it up and now we but now with all better. that being said in the beginning we just we managed it wrong we did not hire a property management company we were the ones taking um, the rent payments people would show up to our house to give us the rent payments we'd have to listen to their sob oh, stories I that. remember that Dan yes, Dan I used to come now. and give us a yes, sob story all the time yes, 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 yes. and then uh, you know we had to go through eviction processes and that, that's just no fun. It's such a was, such a headache. That was horrible. And you're getting the, the phone calls that, you know, this isn't working or that isn't working or the downstairs tenants are making too much noise and they're partying yeah. and oh it was just it was just a nightmare owning, you know, being a landlord. So we teach the right way to do it and, and how to be a landlord and that makes renting houses so much easier yeah. and, and and so much better. So whether you want to flip houses, rent, you know, obviously knowing your exit strategy is important. And so you want to know, we started this by saying you want to flip or not flip. And so you have to determine what's, what's the best exit strategy for you for a house. I, I encourage you to be open to all ways to make money on a piece of real estate because sometimes you start with one idea and then wind up, we've had houses that we thought we were going to flip and now we turn them into Airbnbs. Right. So we've, we've, we've realized those numbers work better and they're in great areas. So always be open to maybe changing that that exit strategy, but be aware of them. Yeah, and as you're in real estate, your vision gets expanded. And when you're around other people that are in real estate, mm -hmm. you know, that saying iron sharpens iron. So, you totally. know, we weren't even thinking of Airbnbs. And then no. somebody happened to mention it and we're like, hey, you know, that rental property that we just bought, maybe we should think about turning that into an Airbnb. Yeah. So we started that division of our portfolio, which we're super excited yeah. about. 
Yeah, yeah it's that, you know, cool. your, your vision gets expanded by the people that you hang around. So how do you start? You know, wherever you want to do, flip or not flip, and you want to learn how to get in real estate, how do you start? Determine your goal. Decide what you want to do first. Are you looking for income, residual income and wealth, or do you want to make quick cash now? You can do both. You can do both simultaneously. You know, you can flip houses for cash, use that cash to put into rentals, however you want to do it. But determine what your goal is. I have six steps here. You know, get education specific to flipping. Now, we offer that at our home flipping workshop, that hence the name home flipping workshop. It's not just about flipping though, it's about flipping, it's about buying and holding, it's about wholesaling, it's about mental mindset, all the stuff we need to be successful about that. Build your team. Um, we'll do different podcasts on how to build your team. We have more time to dive into that. Uh, start looking for deals. That's what you want to look for right away. Remember, we make our money when we what? We buy, right? That's when we make our money. When we buy uh, real estate, that's when we make our money. So start looking for deals. It's only a deal if you can make money on it. So that's the deal you want to look for. Um, Secure your funding partners, which we also offer to our students, but you can secure your funding for the deals so you can do this without using your own money. That's huge. You know, so many people don't get into real estate because they think they don't have the money to do it. Do you know, to this day, <clears throat> Amber and I will do over 100 deals this year. We've done over 600 deals to date. And, you know, out of those 600 deals, probably, uh, let's say 20, 25 are flips maybe. The rest are wholesales and rentals, combination thereof. And do you know we don't use our own money? People are shocked by that. I don't. We have private investor base we've used for 10 Ever years now. Ever since we now. started. Frankly, they'd be yeah. mad at me if I stopped, uh, yeah. stopped using their money. So they kind of they yell at me if I'm not putting their money to use. So um, so that's you, you can use other people's money to build wealth. And that's that's important to know. And last but not least, come to our workshops. I mean, be around us. We have courses that we sell online and that kind of stuff. So get, you know, if you, whatever we have that's valuable to you, you can find value in it. Show up. Be around. And uh, if we have something that's a course out there that you like that might be you know, special to what you're looking for, buy it and see what, uh, see what you think. So. so to recap, to flip or not to flip, first off, you have to determine your goals. What do you need right now in your life? Is it that quick cash that you can get by flipping? Or is it the long-term passive income that you get by having a rental portfolio? Or do you want to do simultaneously? Do you want to do both like we do? Yeah. You know, we teach you all of those exit strategies and we can help you evaluate those on a case by case basis because not every house is perfect for every method. Yeah. So as we start to wrap up, you know, you deserve to live a life that you dream of. You really do deserve that. And fear will subside with time, right? Fear subsides, but life goes on. Life keeps cranking along no matter what. I mean, provided that we're blessed enough to be alive every day we wake up, right? But as long as we're alive, life continues on. So get education, take action, um, push through fear, and you can live your best life. So real estate's the vehicle that got us there, and if it got us there, we're just everyday people. We just wanted a better life for ourselves, and if it got us there, it can get you there. And we took action. We took that's, action. That's a big thing. So guys, you've been listening to the Real Estate of Mind show. We are your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. And if you like what you've heard here, make sure you leave a review for us on iTunes, and please share this with anybody that you think could find value out of it. Um, you can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, at Glenn and Amber Schwarm. And we're very excited about our um, next show. It's going to be a question and can answer. Can I say my line? I, well, I, you can do that in a minute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I just skipped ahead. I thank skipped you. you all together. How kind of you. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> this whole podcast, you've been like that. Love you, honey. But he loves me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. <laughs> Go ahead, dear. <laughs> so our next show is really cool. Um, it's going to be a question and answer segment. So send in your questions if you've got them. We would love to answer them for you. Can I go now? Go ahead. Good. So remember, uh, real estate is the only vehicle where everyday people like us can create true wealth. The only question is, will you be next? We'll see you next week. See you there.